Hey Virgo, welcome back to my channel. Virgo, let's see what drama you have going on in your love life now. <laughs> What's going on with Virgos today? This is a Virgo channel only. So if you are Virgo Sun, Moon Rising, or Venus, definitely watch the video. Um, if you want to get a personal reading from me, there's a link in the description box below. As always, you can just click that link and that will take you to my booking site. That is the only way to get a reading with me. I will never contact you to do readings. I'll never put anything in the comments. You just click the link under the video and that will take you right to my booking site. Okay, and you book through there. All right, Virgo. Just remember, this is a general reading, so be mindful. The messages may or may not resonate. It may not be a continuation of the past reading either, okay? But it may be. So let's see, Virgo. Okay, I'm not going to take those. What are your love messages? What are Virgos? Hi, everybody in the chat. All right, let's see. Okay, Three of Cups. Four of Cups, Eight of Cups, Eight of Wands, the Emperor, <laughs> the Emperor's back, right at the center of the reading, okay, Six of Cups, the King of Swords, Libra, Gemini, Aquarius, Aries, the Queen of Swords, <gasps> A match this is a match and the five of cups okay bottom of the deck you have the hierophant I almost forgot what it was called okay the hierophant this has to do with commitment marriage um, a very traditional kind of a relationship or somebody and this is Taurus energy so it could have something to okay okay we have someone on the cusp of Aries Taurus could be a significator for you. You know, I, I feel like whoever your person is, right? Um, it feels like this person is definitely watching you and that they're, they're at a crossroads. They're making a decision um, about marriage. This person is very passionate about you. But the Three of Pentacles is here. This is the marriage card. This is two people working together as a team, teamwork, either working together on a, on a job or um, together as far as like a, a marriage. I feel like you've got somebody here who's going to be communicating with you, Virgo, actually about like a traditional relationship. And I'm, I'm talking like, I know some of you may not want to be married, but this person does, okay? Traditional wedding. And they've been thinking about it. This person has just really been contemplating. Uh, hmm. They're very curious about you. May even be asking you, what do you think about this? Because I feel like some of you are not looking for marriage or just are okay with just being exclusive with each other. But this person is not. They want to <laughs> nail this call, put the nail in the coffin here with you. Like you be their spouse. All right, let me take a look here. I want to see what the love messages are. <clears throat> what are Virgo's love messages? Oh, of course, pay attention to the red flags. Get love. I'm going to pull that card out of there because that's such a Debbie Downer. Okay, new love. Wow. A new person. A Virgo. This is somebody new. It's true love. Okay. Now I know some of you want someone from the past back. Okay. And maybe you just have that person on the back burner right now because you're exploring other options, but I feel like you're going to meet somebody new. You're very much though. You may not be ready to meet someone new. I feel like you're kind of a bit hesitant to get involved with anyone at this time. 
It's not that you don't want love and it's not that you don't want to have somebody, but there may be somebody coming in here who's just so crazy about you that um, they're just talking about marriage right away or this is something that they want. Okay. So this person, I feel... It feels to me like they're very, in, they've been indifferent to love. Everyone that they've met has been kind of like blah, carbon copies of one another, I just heard. Um, like they look on Instagram or on social media and, and they just feel like every person that they meet is a carbon copy of the one before. And it's the same old. They wear their hair the same. They dress the same clothing, you know, um, they act the same way, they speak the same way, and this person has a lot of suitors and they have a lot of people who are interested in them, but they're not interested in those people because they're not you, Virgo. You're very unique. And I feel like this person mostly is the one, these are red flags for them. They're looking for someone special and someone unique. That's not a carbon copy of all the others. Now, for some, they just said, Spirit just said to tell them that your past person, if things didn't work out, this person went looking for others, but they were looking for you and every other person that they met, and nobody was you, and they wound up leaving a relationship or the dating life, okay, because... They couldn't replace you. And I feel like Spirit's just saying to tell them that they were trying to, they were hoping to meet someone just like you. It's a very bizarre thing. But I feel like, you know, either this is somebody new or like love gets, there's a recommitment to love. There's a recommitment to a relationship. So I feel like this person that in this reading here sees these other people who are like carbon copies of each other as red flags. And they're not interested in that. This person is looking for the one, going after that Ace of Cups, and that one is you. Now, it very well could be somebody you were connecting with in the past where, you know, they met you, but they weren't ready to be with you, and they kept dating, but see, you grew on them. There was something about you that was very special, and you kind of grew on this person. And then everyone that they dated after, it's bizarre. It's like, okay, well, Virgo's there. Why didn't you just go for Virgo? But something, maybe there was religious differences or some obstacles, or they just were not ready for that full committed like marriage kind of thing. It feels to me like they are. It just kind of feels like this person was had to go out and sow their oats. Maybe they had cold feet. But all they're seeing is red flags. All they're seeing is red flags. I don't even want to clarify any of this because that's what I feel is like going on. This person is showing up here. Wow, they've made a decision here. Two of swords in the reverse. No more blocking, no more stalemate. This person is showing up as like taking the lead. There's definitely a reconciliation here to bring new love back into this connection. If there was love before. To... It's stirring the pot. This is kind of like it feels like it's brand new all over again. They want that new, that love, that that feeling that you had when you guys were first together, when you first met. So there's a lot of communication. There's travel coming in. Um, I mean, I feel like this person is going to be on top of you, messaging you a lot communicating with you a lot, uh, with a lot of passion. This is the 1111, so it feels like, I'm just seeing a lot of ones here. It feels like this person is going to be initiate, trying to initiate this passion between you again, okay? But why are they doing this now? Because, well, I mean, I don't know if you said something to them or gave them some tea or something, but it feels to me like this decision, no matter what you said, is coming from them. 
because everyone else out there, the other people they connected with, maybe just very immature or partying all the time or just irresponsible or was just looking for a one night kind of thing, was just not taking them seriously. And I feel like even though your person wasn't taking your relationship seriously, the people they were connecting with after you wasn't taking them seriously and wasn't looking. That made them realize that what they had with you was a good thing and is still is a good thing. I feel like this person may have been used to people that they would meet always wanting more from them. And it feels like either they met someone who wasn't all about them as much as you were, or they met others who just weren't like putting them up on a pedestal. And this person, you know, I feel like they became very discouraged because you were giving, you were giving, and you were loving, and you were true as best as you possibly could be. Okay, and now they're thinking about you, and they're, you're definitely on their mind a lot. So this emperor coming in, like the emperor is all the kings in one, representing fire, earth, air, and water whomever your person is, and they're coming in and taking this leadership role. They went, they go from a king fully to an emperor, okay? And it's an energy, so it's not necessarily masculine or feminine, but it's an energy. The emperor is someone who is true, noble, uh, has a commanding way about them, not, de not demanding, but the, the presence, there's a lot, a lot of respect. And this person is commanding respect now in their life. You must have been dealing with someone who was kind of pagey, immature, not really grown up. But I feel like you're going to get some flowers or maybe a gift. You're going to get an apology uh, from this person. They want to come in with sincerity, and they will be. There's going to be... Um, you might hear something, you might hear some news from this person around October 8th, which is next Friday. There might be some communication. There could be uh, something about getting together, um, going somewhere together, you going to see them, them coming to see you. Now, whether that's long distance or you guys are just getting together meeting somewhere, if you live in the same town, but you haven't seen each other in a while. Let's get a card on this emperor. What is this emperor? Okay, <laughs> four pentacles. So it feels like this person is holding on. They see you, they want long-term security. This is what they want. They're tired of the frivolousness in the people that they've met. And you are too, Virgo. You're kind of like, some of you just really don't want to, you're just... I don't know that you you want love, but then you take you step back and you look. Okay, now you got to meet somebody. Now you got to go through the whole process of seeing if things will work out or if you're compatible. It's like the whole you know interview process kind of thing for those of you who are serious about finding someone um, or attracting someone into your life. So it's a daunting task for you, and some of you just maybe you're still getting over someone from the past or you're just not putting as much effort and energy into it because you have other things in your life that require your attention or you just really, I, I feel like some of you are like, okay, well, if somebody comes along, then yeah, but you're not really going out of your way. If someone strikes your fancy, there is someone here that is going to strike up communication with you and try to connect with you. It could be a past person, and for others, if you know that that's long gone and that's done and over with, this could be somebody like a new lover coming in. This could be somebody you already know or you knew as maybe like, I just heard somebody's brother or sister's friend or a connection to family. It could be a connection to a father figure as well, or you knew somebody... Somebody here, one of you, had just only your father in your life. The mother figure, I don't know, I don't see the mother figure. I see the father figure 
when you were children. You might have known this person when you were children. And they haven't forgotten about you. Okay. So there's something definitely coming up here. Either you're already speaking to them or you will be sometime around the 8th of October. But your romantic feelings definitely coming up again with this person. Now it could be an air sign. But if not, the energy that I'm seeing here is this person telling you that they always felt like you would be good together. They always knew. Um, there's somebody saying, I'm sorry about your mother or maybe your father. I'm sorry about one of your parents. I'm sorry that I let you go and I'm sorry. Yes, definitely an apology. I'm sorry. Look at those two cups back there. And then we have three cups right here. I'm sorry that... I spilled so much wine with others when you were there the whole time. This person sees you both as a match because the air sign can represent Virgo. Okay, male or female, take it however you want. There's a match here. You guys, it's like your communication it will be the strongest aspect. Now, that might be a surprise for some of you because perhaps in the past there wasn't a strong communication thing, but there's something here about truth-telling, honesty. Um, there's someone here maybe unmarried or divorced or a widow. It could be an apology, I'm sorry about your ex um, or your spouse who's gone or passed away or left you or something. Um, I feel like this person wants to take that person's place. We had air all over the reading yesterday. So it's back. Is your person an air sign? Maybe, maybe not. But coming through, both of you are coming through as air. This is true love. This is a romantic start happening here. Okay. I feel like this person has always been in love with you. Maybe you guys didn't communicate or you haven't talked in a really long time. I feel like this person has always been in love with you. Let me take a look at this King of Swords. Okay, yeah. Always keeping it quiet. Hush, hush. Never revealing their thoughts or how they felt. This is like a secret, secret admiration, secret love. A secret lover comes out um, and speaks. Oh my gosh. So the Queen of Swords sits here with the Seven of Swords. I'm hearing, why did you run away? Or why, um, where were you gone? Where did you go? Where have you been? Something along those lines. Now, both of you might have had secret emotions deep down for each other, but never truly shared them. And both of you might have run away from each other. There's a lot of remorse about that. It, it kind of feels like remorse about not coming together at the time when the time was right. And this feels like, sorry about that kind of thing. I'm hearing somebody say, I should have taken the opportunity when it arose, but I wasn't ready to go full in with you. Okay. I thought I was this person, somebody saying to you, I thought I was, I, I wanted to be. Um, but when it came time to get the ball rolling and to actually go and do it, uh, I chickened out or I, I ran away or I just got scared or cold feet or something. So there's remorse here. Or I had some more oats that I needed to sow. I wasn't, I needed to make sure I got it out of my system. <laughs> you take that however you want. Yeah, look, Page of Cups. Definitely an apology. Look. You see how this little child... Oh, sorry about the children as well. Something to do with children. But do you see how he's holding that big cup with those flowers? And look at that. So, so sorry about your child. 
somebody apologizing about a child. Child that used to love to fish. Or for others, it's... Remember when we used to fish together when we were kids? Or something? We used to go fishing when we were kids. Let's look at the Six of Cups here. Tell me about the Six of Cups. I've been thinking about you. I'm thinking about what to say to you, Virgo. I'm thinking about sending you flowers. Somebody did send you flowers or sent you a, um, a message or something, and maybe you didn't respond. This person's been waiting, but they're also standing at the edge of the cliff there, ready to put something out there. There's some boats here waiting for their ships to come in, waiting for you to respond. Maybe you just didn't get the message. I feel like this person sent quite a few messages to you. Hmm. King Cups is back again. So Cancer, Scorpio, Piscean energy. Definitely in the water energy communicating with you no matter what your person's sign is in that watery energy like really very passionate about you but also that passion their actions are passion but it comes from a place of deep love deep emotions for you is what i feel like this is where this is coming from this feels mostly like a stirring up of feelings some of you have felt like dry as a pack of bones just not like not feeling that watery not feeling soaked in the love you've just felt dry and this feels like the water getting stirred up within you there's tears i feel there's tears somebody has tears tears of joy this person is coming in here they want to be with you spend time with you take a trip together they want they're gonna they're separating from wh whomever they were with or whatever this love this dating thing or whatever they thought they were out on this journey seeking they're removing themselves from it because they see everything or all the people that they're meeting or have met have just been nothing but red flags now virgo did you have any red flags of course not kidding everybody has some red flags okay um but i don't think you had as many as as the people they were choosing or the people they were talking to or the way other people or another person was showing up i mean you you have your moments right virgo nobody's perfect here i just want to ask about you i just want to ask about virgo what's going on with virgo actually i'm going to pull some cards from here How's Virgo feeling right now? Oh, there's the King of Cups. Very emotional. You're feeling very emotional, Virgo. This card was sitting here. Playfulness. You've got somebody here, uh, Cancer Scorpio Pisces, coming in with very playful energy. But you, you want that playfulness with someone. That romance. The youth. The fun. Swinging on the swings together, going for walks, playing, playing games, not bad games, you know, not manipulative games, like actual games, playing at the park together, doing fun things, a picnic or shopping together, you know, going to movies or things like that, a playful fun. Okay, so your emotions are very deep right now, but they're dormant, Virgo. Um... Some of you have really been trying to get in touch with how you feel, how you, what's going on deep in your heart. You, a lot of you have just kind of pushed those emotions down, um, maybe because you had other things to take care of. You, a lot of you put your poker face on. If you meet other people, you're just kind of like, I'm a stone and I cannot be effed with. <laughs> so you're just not really revealing your feelings, although they're very tumultuous and you're feeling them very deep. You know, you're feeling things very deep. What else is going on with Virgo? Oh my goodness. He's, that, you know what? Okay. You can't even make this up. The King of Cups and the Eight of Wands. 
the King of Cups and the Eight of Wands. So those of you who are connecting with a water sign, this is a double confirmation that you are definitely 120,000% going to be getting communication from a water sign, okay? Whether you want the, want the communication or not, that's nothing to do with me and your reading. I'm just telling you what I'm seeing here. It's predictive. You don't have to accept communication, but I feel like you and this person want the same thing. You want to talk. You want the romance, the passion. Um, you want to see each other. You want to spend time together. Okay. Now that might not resonate for all of you. That's just for those of you, you know, who are connecting with that water energy. But you also, Virgo, you want to travel. You are, you you want you want to get in your car, and, you know speed down the highway and have your music you want to have fun you want to be happy and enjoy your life you want that passion back let me see what else is virgo feeling okay but you also want stability some of you are really working on your businesses growing a business you may have a brick and mortar working in a family business um, keeping that going you're very stable you want to maintain stability and you want to keep that money flow coming in this is like inheritance you might be getting an inheritance or leaving a legacy of, of family and children or that's something that you want to do this is a card of marriage too um, but it's a card of safety and security so you're definitely like this is your energy right now some of you may need to travel for a family business or work uh, coming up, you may meet a King of Cups, uh, Cancer, Scorpio, Piscean, who comes in wanting the same exact things you want. What else is going on here with Virgo? There may be news about a grandfather or an older father, or an older male, something that will be discussed between siblings. Oh my gosh, Ten of Cups, two tens. This person wants to, listen, I know that we're talking about you here, <laughs> but I feel like you and this person want the same things. A good, stable, steady, uh, functioning, working, wealthy um, foundation to build from together. Nice home, nice vehicles, you know, comfort and quality, but also love and support and passion <laughs> and for some of you it's a king of swords okay listen you can't make these cards up they don't lie it's either a water sign or for some of you it's libra gemini aquarius some of you virgos you want both you have your eye on a water sign you have an eye your eye on an air sign and see which one comes up first <laughs> that's what i feel like for some of you oh my goodness all right let's take a look because you know what, the air, in, the air and the water is showing up in your reading and it's showing up over here. Okay, so some of you might have, and there is fire as well. Some of you might have a couple of choices here, a double. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at the King of Cups. And I'll take a look at the King of Wands, and then I'll take a look at the King of Air. Now, there's no um, King of Pentacles here. And that is a strong message to me, that if you are connecting with a King of Pentacles, Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn, um, they are, they're not significant at this time, okay? That doesn't mean they won't be tomorrow. It just means right now, spirit isn't bringing them up for some reason. And they might be working on something with that king of pentacles. Um, even though there was Taurus energy there, that's more of an energy. All right, let's take a look at the king of cups. What does the king of cups want to say? Okay, I am afraid to contact you. Okay. Hmm. I bury myself and work to forget you. Okay. King of the King of Cups has a lot of fear to contact you. Um, if you haven't been communicating with that person, they've been burying themselves in work. 
to alleviate their fear. They know they have to reach out. They know they want to contact you. And I feel like they will. But right now, it, there's a fear to reach out to you. Maybe you might reject them or, you know, give them a mouthful about something. What else? You don't know how hard it was to let you go. Okay. Some of you might have made the decision to let this person go. And then in turn, they had to let you go. I don't feel like they're dealing well with that at this time. And that's why I do feel like there is reconciliation. They want to come back in to connect with you. They're not doing well without you. They want that love back again. i get one more. It was my fault, but I blamed you. Okay. Yeah, and that's what the apology is coming in. All those things that I said with that apology. Let's take a look at the let's look at the King of Fire, the King of Wands, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. What are their emotions here towards you? I know I messed up everything. Okay. So many things remind me of you. And so many people. There's a lot of people. Like I said, they were trying to do the whole carbon copy thing or find look for you and others, and they weren't able to do that. Everybody was a red flag. They're like, nope, nope, this isn't Virgo. Nope, let me go on to the next one. Nope, that's not Virgo either. Nope, let me move on to the next one. Sometimes I stay awake thinking about you. Yeah, because that's how they can stay in their mind. That's how they can control the um, the narrative of you and them being together. It, they lay in bed uh, looking at your social media, this King of Wands, or looking to see if you're online or if you've been posting. Um, that weird stuff, that kind of stuff, you know? They lay in their bed at night and they're like, thinking of you they're see they're seeking you out looking to see what you're saying if you're with anyone what you're doing who if who you're talking oh i love you okay well that's definitely why this person is doing that they do love you are they in love with you i don't know about that but they definitely have love for you virgo all right let's take a look at this king of air gemini libra aquarius and don't forget you guys um I'm here, going to be here every Friday evening from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to do super chat readings, okay? $20, I'll pull one card and answer any question you have. So pop on in the chat, make your super chat donation with your question in the super chat, and I will do a mini reading for you, okay? All right, let's see, King of Air. And please do hit like, share, and subscribe on your way out if you haven't already. Okay. Timing just wasn't right for us. Okay. There was something here. Perhaps you guys, like I said, met in the past or you were children or there was um, uh, something to do with a child or this person. I, I don't know what exactly the issue is, but I do feel like this person definitely had true love for you. But they felt as if the timing wasn't right they say us, but they mean them because for you, for some of you, it did feel right. And for others of you, you're like, yeah, you're right. It wasn't. Maybe you guys had different partners as the years went by. I will wait for a sign from you. Okay. So this person is definitely sitting in a position of grief and remorse, and they hope that you will reach out to them or message them. Um, with a, a nice, you know, a lovely, sweet message, definitely. I don't think they're going to contact you first for some, this King of Swords. I feel like you're going to have to be the one to do that if you want. You came closer than anyone, Virgo. No one in their life has ever gotten as close to them as you have. No one has ever made them feel so safe and comfortable to share their inner things, their inner emotions or their feelings than you. I don't know if you guys were best friends or what, but they couldn't let you get close to them. Okay. Not all the way. I feel like they're ready to now, but 
I think at the time before, they were just incapable of allowing that to happen. They just couldn't for whatever reasons. But the overall energy for all of these kings is that they've been thinking about you and thinking about this whole thing and this relationship. And uh, like I said, all three kings are watching you. <laughs> but they are thinking about like they want to communicate and tell you, let's do this. Now, I just want to pull some cards here for you and see what your love messages are here for you, Virgo. Okay. Spiritual lesson. This person is in your life to teach you a spiritual lesson. I know some of you have truly learned some things about your relationships in the past and things like that. You definitely have had an awakening or even just some spiritual experiences that have made you realize a lot of things about your path and the people that you love and the people that are in your life. You've had major lessons here. Um, now, for some of you, it could be a King of Cups that you learned a lot of things from because a King of Cups usually has a very gentle, uh, sweet nature. And Virgo, you know, you can be pretty, you know, of course, your Chinese sign affects your Virgo as well. But Virgo, like the foundation of Virgo is can be quite analytical, can sometimes be harsh, can sometimes be very hermit like and withdrawn okay um the the earth is very solid and slow okay earth signs just very solid and slow but you know like earth earth signs are like earthquakes you know when they move it's like boom you know <laughs> it's like it's like it's like the way that the tectonic plates move like you know, Virgo is very slow, but strong. That's, that's earth energy, you know, like very dense type of a person, type of sign. Um, strong willed, strong headed in a lot of ways, even though you're mutable and easy, easily adapt to change. You could be very strong headed, strong willed where the water is very fluid water is very fluid you know floating down a river or is freed from a boat very whew, fluidy and emotional and sometimes wishy-washy <laughs> but very like you know they're intense so all right they're giving me um water can crash or it can flow okay water can be a great penetrator water can destroy but at the same time it can be very gentle and cleansing so uh, i went into something there okay let's see longing okay virgo someone is secretly longing for you i feel like it's either one person or it's three people i don't know what's going on here but that's definitely what's happening here i said secret so it could be an air sign okay and there's someone here who is gripped by obsessive thoughts of you definitely virgo <laughs> oh my goodness let's see one more but healing this is beautiful old wounds and childhood issues need revisiting so you're healing something here virgo you definitely are maybe you're healing a past thing with a water sign and you have new people or someone new coming in and for others it's just healing and it's going to re-emerge re again all right let me get your advice cards here virgo's advice Hi everybody, how are you? How are you today? This candle I have lit is maple, no, yeah, maple wood bacon. I think it's bacon, wait. No, it's, it's, it's maple, like for 
um, like syrup, pancakes, waffles. Mmm. But I can't smell it because my nose is like stuffy. So I lit it for you. <laughs> and I know you can't smell it. Someday we'll have smell a vision. And then we'll, you know, we'll all be able to share our scents. Our lovely candle, apple, maple scents for our autumn. All right, Virgo's advice. Wow, we have the Ten of Cups. A happy marriage. Seek a happy marriage, Virgo. Seek happily ever after. Be open. Attract that as well. There's emotional contentment here, so, so be emotionally content. Content with what you have, not with what you don't have, right? Never in a position of wanting or longing. Um, re establish or reestablish a loving relationship with your children. I don't know who that's for, but if you're not in touch with your children or something along those lines, your advice here is to get back into a, a loving relationship with your children or establish one with your child or a grandchild. Um, no Virgo that if you have children, you raise them very wisely and successfully. You did a great job with your kids. You may not feel like you did. And listen, if that's how you feel, I get it because I'm a mother as well. And mother's guilt is a real thing. <laughs> it's the real deal. And, um, stay and and focus on people i mean also that's also for the fathers okay not just the mothers i'm sorry i know I, I sometimes i forget to address the males here the masculine um you're doing a great job with your children and you have been so know that okay and stick with people that you can trust at this time that's your advice People who support you and have your back. Like when you think of them, you know that you can count on them. Those are your people, your tribe. If not, if you don't have anyone, begin to um, build your tribe. Okay. Oh, nice, Virgo. Well, that's definitely you. Look, does she look like anybody here who's listening? Or someone you know? Okay. Stand up for yourself, Virgo. And your beliefs. Have confidence in yourself, Virgo. Challenge those who are in power, but also make sure you choose your battles wisely. Okay? So don't um, don't be afraid to stand up and say what you need to say despite any pushback. But don't waste your time in frivolous battles. Make sure what you're fighting for is one of your convictions. You don't have to have a conviction. You don't have to have 80 million convictions. Just have a couple or two, three, or four, whatever they might be, and stick with those. And don't let anybody tell you any differently. You can always listen to other people's opinions and advice. But if you feel very strongly about a conviction, whatever it might be, you know, um, stick with it and stand by it. Whatever decisions you make, whatever path you choose, stick with it and stand by that decision. Don't be flaky and don't be wishy-washy. That's how people know that who you are and that's how people can know that they can trust you because you show conviction. And justice, wow, okay. But also be impartial and objective. But again, stand up for what you believe. That's twice. So I don't know if somebody, you know, some of you might be um, standing up for a relationship or a marriage or something that fell apart. Maybe there's a lot of people around you who disagree with this relationship. But if you believe in it and your person believes in it and you both want to defend your family, despite what others say, despite what happened in the past, there's, it's never too late to raise standards. You can do it at any time. You can make, you can change the narrative at any time. And if this has to do with a past relationship and you're somebody, you guys want to work it out, um, fight for it, stand up for it. You can be impartial and objective where you can allow other people to be and hear what they have to say. Okay, but at the end of the day, it's ultimately your decision because you have to live with that decision. 
okay but you can try to see all sides of a situation if you need to you will win virgo if your position is one of integrity if you're coming from a place of authenticity and good intentions and you are true to yourself then it does not matter what anyone else thinks or believes or says okay because you're not out here trying to people please you weren't put on this earth to live up to other people's expectations and they weren't put on this earth to live up to yours how many of you noticed that i quoted bruce lee twice today in my reading because i'm a big bruce lee fan and i quote his stuff all the time i'm just so weird and i called that out because i don't want someone leaving the comments like hey do you know you're quoting bruce lee like most people wouldn't know that but some would and then i'm gonna have to ignore you because i don't read the comments sorry i try to read them i don't always get to them so yes that's what i was doing um let's get into the charms okay oh fork in the road jeez thank god i don't have to eat with this fork i'd be starving trying to pick it up fork in the road for some of you oh i just heard neptune pisces i just felt piscean energy um some of you this is a three-pronged fork isn't a three-pronged fork for dessert or is that a four-pronged fork i'm not sure something this is not four prongs this is three if you have a three-pronged fork in your house somewhere i know all of you are going to get off here and go looking in your silverware drawer if you have one in your drawer this reading is for you 100 percent um but it mostly feels like you've, you're at a fork in the road right now between three people fire air and water or you will be okay or you're with someone who's schizophrenic and they show up with three different personalities <laughs> i don't know i'm not making fun i'm just Okay, maybe I am. I just don't know why I would even say that. So we're going to leave that fork there. Um, hmm. And some of you, like, you only have three forks. You need to go get a set. You need to, like, up your set of silverware, I feel. Like, that silverware you have in that drawer right now is trash. It's like, would you get it from, like, Walmart or something? You need to go to, like, Oneida or get a nice set of silverware for your your home the details virgo we want the details we want quality in the details all right so now we're back here with this eagle doesn't the eagle always shows up and of course being from the philly area i always think of the philadelphia eagles so i'm gonna have to throw that in there right i'm not really transmuting a message about that but i just have to put that in there but this also feels like the um american eagle and some of you okay i'm just seeing a flagpole so somebody there's a flagpole that was put at half mast for someone that you know it could have been military border patrol i don't know somewhere down in nevada arizona texas new mexico somebody's down there lives down there but um american troops maybe you're connecting maybe you're not from america and your person is you're connecting with an american and okay they just gave me this strange message some of you are trying not to be a victim of prey and so what i feel like is happening here if you feel like you're like oh my gosh yes that's me somebody's been preying on me um, they're either praying if somebody's not praying for you they're praying on you so you need to be very careful and discerning of what's happening with somebody specifically like if they're not down on their knees at night before they go to bed asking god to bless your heart and keep you safe while you're there not together with you and praying for healing in your relationship then that person is praying on you and trying to get something from you so just keep your keep your wits about you that's not for everybody and that's not predictive that this person coming in is doing that this just feels more like that's for someone specific 
Okay, so now we have a horse. And so I feel to tell some of you this, um, you're connected with someone who is of the Chinese sign, the horse, the sociable horse. The horse is sociable, very sociable person. Um, there's also somebody here that has like, a very powerful car or a hot rod or a race car or there's someone connected to horse rating or is an equestrian or does something with horses maybe you have somebody here has um, a, a ranch or a farm where there's horses or you ride horses or go horseback riding or your person and then I just heard okay <laughs> Sometimes spirits funny. My guides, they tell me things. And they just come out of the blue. Some of you are dating someone who is Italian. It Italian. They're either from Italy or they're Italian American, like Rocky Balboa. That's your you're dating a Rocky Balboa, the Italian stallion. Maybe you're connecting with someone who's a boxer <laughs> or does UFC or MMA. Is that the same thing? I don't know. I should know because I love Bruce Lee, but I don't. So I don't have a problem admitting that I don't know what I'm talking about. So there's something here with that. And I got all that from a horse, so I don't know. Here the horse would be, 19, all right, so 1966. And is it 66? Hold on a minute. Nineteen sixty six and nineteen seventy eight and then nineteen ninety and then two thousand and two, I think. Okay, I'm gonna leave that there. So now of course you have look, this is a wine glass and guess what's in it? Peach schnapps. Okay, so if you like peach schnapps, I'm, I'm just kidding. Peach schnapps are my favorite. This is actually, um, I just, um, they gave me the name, and I don't know what this is. I'm just hearing blood orange. Blood orange. I don't know what blood orange is. They just said blood orange. Okay. Uh, in a wine glass or in a glass. Or some kind of, all right, so obviously it could be like, um, also like a um like an orangey wine too oh and then they okay so i just had an image of the kool-aid guy punching through the brick wall <laughs> the f the half kool-aid guy maybe you have like a a cocktail called kool-aid or you drink a cocktail called kool-aid i don't know <laughs> we're leaving that there are you drinking one right now or are you going to make one? Okay, so we have, okay, some kind of guitar. All right, there's four, there's four uh, strings. So this is a bass. Okay, some of you used to catch, used to go fishing with someone that would ca catch bass, bass fishing. They were called the bass master or somebody, they called themselves the bass master or they were a bass master. But this is, um, oh, I just heard Ace of Bass. I saw the signs. Open up my eyes. I saw the signs. Da, 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 da. Okay, so we have a, yeah, a bass. Somebody plays in a band, maybe, or plays bass. Um, they might play guitar, too, but they, they play, it's a string instrument. We're going to put it there. There's somebody, either you, maybe you play a string instrument. Some of you are, if you do, you haven't played it in a while, or you're looking at it right now, and you're thinking of, of a song, and you just heard Ace of Bass, and so now you're going to go learn that. Or some of you, um, this is your person you're connected to, who is, somebody's dusting the bass, off, or the dust off their stringed instrument, guitar or something. Okay, that's so bizarre. Um, I feel like I want to get another one. Mm. Okay. This is a Christmas candle. For sure. Christmas candle. See, and it's I know you probably my charms are I don't know why my camera let me see. My camera doesn't like to focus. 
Why is that? How do I get my camera to focus? You can't see it, but you know how I see sometimes people like they put their hand up to block out the behind view. But anyway, it's a candle and it has a little holly around it. Okay, so it's a Christmas candle. I don't know what that's about because it's not even Christmas. Not yet, but... You know, it's really strange, too, because today, uh, this morning, I was at the store and I was looking for candle, candle, candelabras or candles, electric candles for my windows. <laughs> And I couldn't find any, which is fine. But this isn't actually an electric candle, though. This is a real candle because the wax is melting. Um, okay, I don't know. We're going to pull another one, though, because I'm not really sure. They're not giving me anything except to say, yeah, maybe you were looking for electric candles for your windows or you're thinking about getting them for Christmas or something if you celebrate the holidays, the Christmas, or just uh, somebody leaving a light on for you around the holidays when it's cold. Um, weird, I just saw, I just saw an image of um, the Headless Horseman. <laughs> what the, I just saw the Headless Horseman. That's Halloween, what's his name? Ebenezer, no. What's the Headless, what the heck was his name? I forget. Buck, wait. Somebody's going to post it in the comments, I know. Wait, Paul Revere? No, that's Paul. I'm mixing up Paul Revere and the Headless Horseman. <laughs> Do you remember, like, so American revolutionary history was um, one if by day, two if by night? There's something about a candle in a window like in this October through December season, I'm, I'm walking away from this. The Headless Horseman, what was, did he have a name? Somebody tell me. Didn't he have like a pumpkin head or something? Was that a movie? Oh, pumpkin head. Wasn't that a horror movie? I don't watch horror movies, so I just remember that. Maybe somebody's going to watch pumpkin head, or you just did <laughs> watch that horror movie. Pumpkin head. Ah, that's scary. I don't do horror movies. You would think I would because being a Virgo, but I don't. You know why? Because I see that shit in my head. <laughs> I see that scary stuff. I don't like being scared. Life is scary enough as it is. Now I watch like thrillers. Thrillers are fine, and I'll watch like serial killer documentaries, but I don't watch that slasher crap. I, th I think that's stupid, actually. That's my opinion, though. I just think it's dumb. All right, we got a pair of sunglasses, and we have a dinosaur. Well, what do you want me to say about the dinosaur? I mean, somebody's name's Barney? Connecting with a Barney? This is a Tyrannosaurus Rex. This is a T-Rex. Speaking of thrillers... Jurassic Park. Can I tell you what? I'm just going to tell you a short little story. And, and some of you um, need to go get your glasses fixed. Like you're sitting there with like one lens or the arm is missing and you still have it propped up on the bridge of your nose. I mean, come on now. Go get your glasses fixed. When 1992, I read the book Jurassic Park before the movie came out. And halfway through the book, I was having panic attacks because I was so scared because as a little girl, my brother and I used to watch a TV show called Land of the Lost with Will and Holly. And I used to get so scared. I was terrified of the T-Rex in Land of the Lost, but I was fascinating, fascinated with dinosaurs. So I read the book, I think I was like 21 or 22, and I was like freaking out. I was so scared. It just triggered all my childhood trauma from that stupid TV show. But then I went and I saw the movie like an idiot because my boyfriend made me go see it, even though I told him I was scared, but I went anyway with him. And can I tell you the scene where they're in the Jeep and then the T-Rex the comes and 
that one guy before he gets eaten, you know, like when he was in the toilet or the outhouse, like the scene when the dinosaur came real close, remember? And he was like, it only sends you by your movement. It can't see. I'm not kidding you. Now it's like 30 years later and I still cannot watch the Jurassic Park, like Jurassic Park movies at all. That's not even a horror. That's a, that, what do you call that? It's a thriller. Like I'm telling you, trauma will stick with you unless you deal with it. One of my other biggest traumas was I used to have dreams of tornadoes chasing after me. And then Twister came out in the late 90s. And I made myself watch that. And I got over my fear of tornadoes because <laughs> I was having them in my dreams. But honestly, like the, the dinosaur thing, forget it. Uh, I, 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 all I could do is Barney back then. I could only handle like Barney the dinosaur. I love you. You love me. Cause that was like a nice dinosaur and he wasn't trying to bite your freaking head off. So maybe Jurassic Park resonates for some of you, or you're taking your kids to a dinosaur exhibit or something, or you're going to a museum or you have maybe recently, isn't there a Jurassic Park attraction or in a, a ride somewhere, like at Disney or something. Maybe there's like a roller coaster or attraction or a ride or something. Now, I and they just said, to, there's also a lotus flower here. So that's gonna resonate for someone. Either you're gonna get a tattoo of a lotus flower or you have one. This dinosaur though, oh, it just went away. Oh, it just went away. I forget what I was gonna say about it. Oh, um, somebody's going to be like, have a dinosaur head for a Halloween costume. If you're going to a Halloween party or you're thinking of, of what you can be, T-Rex seems to be it. <laughs> well, that was fun. Okay, we hit the hour. I'm trying to get in an hour for your readings each day so that you guys can just, everybody can get the messages. So again, thanks for watching totally fun don't forget to show up i'm getting i'm saying goodbye you guys right now but don't forget to show up on fridays if you want to get a personal mini reading from me twenty dollars one card you can pay right through super chat i can't give you any refunds because i can't refund from there it doesn't work like that so if you post your question and you don't get it answered come back the following friday the moderators are going to have a list of everyone who posts their question and your name so that if you don't get your question answered just show up the next friday and you'll be the first ones um, to get your questions answered okay all right you guys so thanks for hanging out that was fun love you all i don't even know what to call this reading but maybe i'll let you guys caption it we'll see and i will see you guys tomorrow all right bye